Hi, I'm Varian Brandon, and I am a stranded color work designer in the beautiful mountains of Western North Carolina. I haven't said that in a while. I figured I had to say it. Not that you don't know all of them have gotten this far, but if you have, you're new. Welcome to my ramblings. <laughs> anyway, um, what we're going to talk about today is construction of sweaters in the round from the bottom up. Okay, I said that you're gonna die laughing at this. I have to tell you this aside. I've said that several times as that opening, just to kind of to see how what it sounded like, and it, all of a sudden it was like bottom up. <laughs> it just sounded really not good. <laughs> anyway, um, sorry, I digress. Um, but um, I am sure there's some of you who have done, if you've done sweaters, you've done them from the top down uh, in the round. Um, we're gonna talk about bottom up, which is a different way of doing it, and but it, it's still in the round. Uh, I will say that what, what we're going to talk about today, you won't be able to make a sweater out of it unless you, well, you could possibly, but it's, it's, this is not to have you give you sweater instruction. This is to let, get be, have you become familiar with the construction of sweaters in the round from the bottom up in case you get somebody's patterns like mine um, <laughs> that are, de are designed that way. And... Um, you just need just gives you a better overview. You know where I'm going with this. Gives you a better overview of how the sweaters are put together. Okay, you got that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, um, I noticed. I've looked at videos. I'm sitting here leaning. There's a there's an armrest right here. So lots of times I'm leaning over on the armrest that looks weird. But anyway, that's I keep digressing. Start again. Start again. All right. Um, what I wanted, to, we're going to start off with is a little bit of history. And because I'm a history person, um, I like, this is, this is not going to be a which is better, top down or bottom up. Um, I, I don't feel like I'm capable or comfortable to do that. And I don't think it's necessary because, and I've had these discussions with people before um, that know both ways that say it just become, it's just all a matter of what you were taught, what you're familiar with. And I, this is the way I was taught. It is, as far as I can tell, the historic way, historic slash traditional way of doing things. I've got a headband that's gonna do funny things. All right, anyway, uh, of, of putting these sweaters together. I'm a student of history, as I just said. So I kind of like that what I'm doing in constructing my sweaters is the same way that sweaters have been constructed for hundreds of years or so. So that, let's look at a little history here. Um, from the pictures and everything I can figure out, knitting in the round from the bottom up has been done with um, knitting belts, knitting sticks, knitting, what is it called? I just saw this the other day, straw wisps, I think it's what it's called, um, which is a bunch of, this is a cool thing, a bunch of straws bound together that you can stick the end of your knitting needle in if you are in, I know they do this in Shetland, I'm sure they do this other places too, uh, the original which is the long knitting pins, the long DPNs that are really long, and that you stick and you have three of them, no, yeah, three of them, two on each for the front, then one on the front, one on the back, and the, the third one is the one you work with. The one you work with gets stuck into a knitting belt with holes in it, a knitting stick, which has, um, it's, it's a round stick that has a, a sort of a reverse, it's a concavity at the top that you can, you put in your belt and your needle, the end of your needle goes into that small bit of concavity or hole that kind of that anchors it down, all of it's to hold everything up. And historically, the reason you're doing in the round is, um, and I, I would, I usually, when I say this, I usually say to get around having to piece things together. The only trick is, is as I was going through this, I realized that putting sweaters together, pieced together, didn't come about until long after the sweaters in the round were being done. So, and, and did not, as far as I can understand, did not, the pieced sweaters did not come about until like the ladies magazines or books that um, they were trying to write up patterns for sweaters and the only way they knew how to write them out in these magazines was to 
lay them out as if you were laying out a, a, a blouse, a jacket, a skirt, as you would with, in other words, with cloth and not with a knitted garment. So what they had the, the people do is that you knitted up the piece as if you, it was a cutout piece of a sweater or I mean of, of a, like a blouse and, uh, and sew it together. Um, they didn't quite understand or didn't think their readers would understand the whole knitting in the round thing. So pieced came second, in the round came first, and in the round from the bottom up came first. Um, so I, I tell you, what, I think it, let me walk through bottom up. Okay, I'm sure I'm going to come up with something I've forgotten to talk about in this opening piece. But what I want to do is I've got um, some little diagrams. Oh, <laughs> Number one um, of this, uh, for some unknown, just as a personal thing, um, some unknown reason, my fingernails are like looking horrid. Um, you can tell I don't do manicures, um, at least not the traditional kind. So please forgive that, that's, that's on you. Please forgive that. Secondly, um, hopefully these diagrams are as close as I can get. Um, you can see what I'm gonna do, hopefully for these diagrams. So look. Give me some slack, cut me some slack on those too, okay? <laughs> so anyway, here we go. We're gonna go over to the other camera. We're gonna look at these diagrams and we are going to go forward with these different ways that you can put sweaters together, knitting in the round from the bottom up. Wait, before we go on to the other camera, I just remember what I was trying to remember. That was that. Um, the, the reasoning, I had a, um, somebody sent me a note the other day that wanted to know why you use steak. Just um, what was the purpose of the steak? Which I thought was an interesting question. I hadn't thought about it because I just used them without thinking about it. Um, but it's the purpose so you can continue in the round. And you continue in the round because with stranded color work, um, it is a heck of a lot easier to keep the uh, knitted side f facing you at all times because that way, and you're, you're also in the round, you're always knitting and therefore the, the public side of your sweater is is facing you and you can read your patterns when you don't have to purl back and have the the floats kind of in the way on the way back that's one thing the other thing is is you it's in a very efficient way of putting a sweater together you don't have to um it's all in one piece i was gonna say you don't have to piece it together but as i said earlier the piecing came afterwards so um it it's for it's for um putting together pretty quickly. Um, it's because what, what these women um, historically were doing was getting their sweaters together or jumpers or whatever you want to call them so they could get them on their loved ones as fast as possible or they could um, get them down to whatever vendor they had in town where they could get some extra money for that. Um, historically, these things have, were started in the round so that um, they started underneath the left, and I forget whether this flips or not when I edit this, but underneath the left arm. And if you think about it, if you, most people are right-handed, this is my version, I have no idea whether this is true or not, but if you think about it, um, if everybody is, most everybody's right-handed, right-handed, right-handing, right-handedness is dominant that if you're gonna reach with your right hand, um, that if you're reaching with your right hand, then your right side is exposed. If you start these sweaters on the left side, then the jog, where, because the spiral, uh, uh, these things are, are really a spiral. They're not really rings in the round, they're actually a spiral. Where the, where the start of round is and that, that pattern jogs a bit, whether it's a yoke, whether it's an all over, whatever it is, um, that is going to be under your left side if you start over there. The side that is nine times out of ten, eight times out of ten, is the side that will not be reached for first. You reach with your right hand first if you're right-handed. Now, if you're left-handed, do you switch to the other side? No, I think that would be confusing, but historically, you, you know, you get what I'm saying. Um, except for the yoke sweaters, and we'll talk about why, you'll see why in just a minute. But the yoke sweaters are primarily started, as I said, I don't know whether this video is flipping or not, is, is primarily started up on the back, the across the back um, area right there. <laughs> what is the back? The upper back. And we'll see that in just a minute. I've got lots of examples of this one here, and we'll you'll figure out why this, this cord's across there in just a minute. Um, but um, 
I think that's it now. You'll see a lot of these things. I've got examples of most of these things, not all of them, most of them. Okay. All right. Now, now over to the other camera. All right, here we go. This is a document that um, I have for my classes and it is, you can see what cell, this, this particular, we're going to start off with what I call the hybrid of round and flat. This is one that um, is done completely round, bottom up, as I said. You can see here that you're starting, and I have a pointer of a crochet hook. So sorry, I'm, I couldn't find a DPN really quickly, but anyway. Um, here we're going from the bottom up here. Here, as I was telling you, um, you start under the left side. If this is the front, that's the right, that's the left, as you're wearing it, not as you're looking at it. You start, you go across the front, and you go, then you go around to the back. And you work to the underarm. And you can, you can put this, the, your stitches onto a um, waist yarn or a couple of DPN, a couple of cir uh, circular needles. And you can actually try this on and just make sure you've got the length correct. You then divide, um, take them out of the round, and you put the back or the front, whichever you want to work first, on a separate needle or waist yarn. And you work the front with all the decreases here as if it was flat and the back the same way. And then um, you need to determine how, what kind of sleeve um, you're going to do. I don't know why I circled that just then, but that's okay. You have to determine what kind of sleeve you're going to do. Um, you can put the shoulder seam together. And this is another place where as you are going up here, you can try it on so that you can figure out how deep you want this armhole and whether this um, neck is working just right. Okay. That is that hybrid. So you're working in the round and then flat. Okay. This next one is a classic, um, is a classic drop shoulder, the scan, uh, the scan in the Scandinavian Norwegian, uh, tradition. It is, um, do all Norwegian people do this or Scandinavian people do it this way? Probably not. I don't think you can say that about anything. Um, but it's just where I heard it first. Okay. Again, this is from, uh, where are we? This is from the bottom up. It started on the left-hand side. You work across the front and then you work across the back like this. I'm so, I just tried not to touch the table. I don't like the shaking. Um, and then you work all the way up to the shoulder. And I am not sure, I think it's with steaks that you put in um, this uh, neck or whether you work the last little bit of it, you know, separately you know, um, like you did with the other the hybrid. I'm not sure. That's something. If you know that answer, let me know. Because this, but from what I understand, you work all the way to here, and I've seen sweaters like this, all the way to here. And then you um, put that aside and you start with the sleeve. The sleeve is worked from the wrist up to here. And, um, and then when you get your length, you end up turning the whole thing inside out and you work about an inch or an inch and a half of um, reverse stockinette. So that when you turn it right side out again, this is the back side of the stockinette right there. And you slide this into here. Well, first of all, you, um, first of all, you've got to cut it. But anyway, you um, lay this on top of this and, and make a mark where this, you see how deep that is. And then you go to the sewing machine or you take out your needle and thread and do a back stitch. And you go with just about two stitches in between. You come down here, you go over, and you go back up again on the other side. And then you can cut, that's just to secure those stitches. Then you can cut down like that. That opens this up here. And you can either do that before or after you um, join the shoulders. And then you slide the uh, arm in. I mean, the, what's that called? That called is a sleeve. You slide the sleeve in and then you sew it in along that line right there or along that line right there then this reverse stockinette flap which is usually done in a solid color is then um, covers up that that seam because you whip that down on the inside and it gives a real smooth sort of look on the inside um, and let's see that's about all I have to say about that one we'll probably come back to that about something else because I'll think of it because I can't seem to be thinking in a straight line today so here we are this is the same kind of classic drop shoulder this is um, that but this is the in the British tradition which again is started on the left hand side you work around the front you work around the back okay until you get to the armhole 
and when you get to the armhole you put a certain percentage of stitches on a holder at the underarm and generally that's about five to ten percent so um, just for the sake of numbers and to make the math easier for me um, let's just say you're making a teeny tiny little sweater oh it has a hundred stitches all the way around then um, the number of stitches you put total front and back are, are somewhere between five and ten stitches you put on a holder um, here and here Okay, now the interesting thing is the downside, I told you we we're gonna go back up this one, the downside of picking up all the pieces of paper, all right, the, the downside of this one here uh, for modern day things is that this is a big sweater. It usually has anywhere from a four to six inch um, ease, positive ease, so that you have anywhere from two to three inches on either side. So that when you put this on, I'm betting that um, your shoulder is actually going to be right there don't move because your body is going to be you know kind of here so that that puts this seam when this sleeve goes in that puts that sleeve seam further down on your arm now some people like that i have a friend who calls that the uh hockey uniform join i mean it looks like a hockey hockey player's uniform um which is fine I like a drop shoulder as a designer because it gives me the opportunity to put some have some sort of special design right there um, where that to so the top of the sleeve. Um, I kind of like that. But on the other hand, that is a heck of a lot of, of coming falling that far off your shoulder is kind of hard. I mean it's a little it's really oversized. It's kind of 80s sweater, if you will. Um, this one, when you put a certain 10%, let's, let's say you put 10%, which is 10 stitches. And let's say that you are getting, um, oh, eight stitches per inch. Um, and so that is a little over um, an inch taken out of the tenth, taken out from the underarm, which would be um, about a half an inch on the front and a half an inch on the back. So what you've done by doing that is that you're moving this connection piece about a half an inch, um, you know, that way, that way, about a half an inch that way, which sets that a little bit closer to your shoulder. Is it perfect? No, it helps a little bit. Okay, but for this sweater, you'll notice here the sleeves are worked from the top down. It's real interesting, the, the bottom up, top down for the sleeves, okay? And so what you do is once you, you put in a steek here, so you're going across here, you put a certain number of stitches on a holder, and, um, and then you've got to get over that gap that those stitches are, and we'll show the, I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, and then you um, add in extra stitches for a steek, you open up, cut up in the steek, and you pick up stitches around the circle and work around your armhole opening, and you work that way. Now the benefit of that is A, you don't have any separate, separate sleeves to work, um, and B, um, if these, are, these um, were working garments, so that um, people working, um, you know, with, yeah, I don't know, working on board, on board boats or fisher boats or whatever. Um, this is where you get a lot of, can or can get, what are you doing, focus? Um, this is where you can get a lot of wear, is right on that wrist. And if you've started this way and go that way, then that's your cast off for your sleeve. And if you've ever had to pull stitches out and, and pull back, um, either rip it or tinking back, whatever, it's a heck of a lot easier to pull back for where you've cast off than where you've cast on. So you'll see there are some pictures of um, the original working sweaters of the Gansies, which are not, not stranded work, they're more done with knits and pearls, but of the Gansies that were originally done in navy blue the sun and the salt and the air and everything and the age have made those navy blue sweaters turn sort of gray. And then you'll sometimes see that from the cuff up to about there, the, this part is navy blue. So you can tell that somebody who knits in that family, whether it's the sailor himself or whether it's the sailor's wife or sister or mother or whatever, um, has had to pull that back out and add, add extra stitches in. Okay. This one, 
that's worked from the wrist to the back up to the shoulder, you, if that gets worn, you're now trying to pull out a cast on and it is not as easy as I'm sure you know. Okay, so that's, so those are the classic drop sweaters, all right, or one, one form of them. So here's, oh, oops, wrong page. Let's get to the right page. Hello, there we are. Okay, this is the last of the classic drop sweaters. This is called, this is what I call a modified drop sweater. So what that does, same thing, starts here, you know, starting on the left-hand side, you're going around, but when you get here, you're not only put, put stitches on the underarm, uh, uh, underarm, uh, hold on, underarm stitches on a holder, but you also do a little bit of shaping here so that you end up pulling that seam further up towards your shoulder. And so then you have the benefits of knitting down to the sleeve like this. You don't have to knit, I mean, down to the wrist. You don't have to knit any extra um, stitches in, uh, hello, talk, Varian. Um, you pick up stitches and around in a circle here and you work that way so that you don't have to knit the, shul, knit the sleeve separately. You can, um, and you also, if you need to pull back and for length and stuff like that, you can pull back that way. Okay. Now let me show you a couple of examples of that while we're right here. And I may have to pull the focus back on this. Hold on two seconds. All right. Here is just a classic, you know, all over stranded sweater. It is a drop shoulder. It has been picked up. Um, sleeves have been picked up around a cut, a cut uh, steak opening and worked that way. And as I can say, I've got this design right at the uh, around the, the uh, top of the, the shoulder. But you will notice that where I picked up stitches, I did put some stitches on a holder, which are these stitches here got put on the holder. And then um, you see where I picked it up is right there where that red is and then a couple of stitches. And it goes straight up here, all the way up to the shoulder, okay? So therefore the only the only distance that this seam has been moved closer to the shoulder is just a matter of these stitches right here. So it's just instead of if this was that Scandinavian version without the uh, or just the classic version without putting the stitches on a holder, this is where your armhole would be. I mean, that seam would be would be way up here, if that makes sense. Is that doing that? OK. This one, I only, um, the only way I moved that um, seam was by just the width of the underarm stitches that I put on the holder and then and picked up later. This one is a little more modern. This is the modified drop shoulder here. This one, um, I put a certain number of less stitches on a holder here. And then I also did some decreases in here. And you can tell that, um, he, yeah, this it well, it's sort of right there, isn't it? No, I think it's right here. Okay, this, you can tell by just that stitch right there. If you go straight up here, you see that it goes way up, straight up that way. Okay, does that make sense? This is your straight line. Do I have, if I had a ruler, where would it be? Well, I can do it with a piece of paper. Okay, this is, um, where am I here? That stitch goes, you can see those stitches going all the way up to the top, kind of right there, okay? And because I not only have stitches on a holder, but I've also turned in, then I've, I have brought that, that seam in God, a good um, two inches pulled in that way. It's the sweater sweater has, hopefully that made sense. The sweater has been worn, so it's been pulled out of shape a little bit. Let me get back to the next, the next one we're gonna talk about. And here's the raglan. And this is the raglan in the round bottom up, okay? Um, same thing, you start over on the, um, where's my, oh the wrong thing. You start over on the left hand side and you go up 
all the way up to the underarm. You put your, you put this aside and then you start your sleeves here and you put, do the two sleeves and you put them all on one needle at that point. And this is a diagram. Now this is if you took this sweater and you cut it straight in half like that and look down the top of it. So here's the body and here are the sleeves, okay? So um, here is the front and here is the back. Now, if this was one of the other um, things I was talking about, one of the drop shoulder ones, this is where that start around would be. Um, and it is, it is actually, I should say it this way, it is that where that start around is. Once you um, get the sleeves made, you have to rearrange everything so that your start of round becomes back here. And that is that back right, I don't know, shoulder blade. And you start here and you knit across the back. And what, first of all, you have a certain number of stitches on the holder for the body and for the sleeve and you put the two of those together and you kind of you know turn it around so the under the underarm stitches on holders are like next to each other and you'll come back later on and do a kitchener stitch or two needle bind three needle bind off to close that up but you start here you go across the back and then you then you knit across the the sleeve um, the left sleeve and you put you put a marker here you put a marker there and you go across the front you put a marker and you go around that sleeve and now you're at the end of your round and then you keep doing that around like this and in this case for the raglan you're doing raglan decreases all, all the way up till we get to here to finish off this one you can um, try on as you go you can um, put your arms through the um, through the um, the sleeves and kind of just pull it up and just kind of see how it's how it's fitting how it's moving on up to your neck okay um, it is a little as you start this because these sleeves because this connection is kind of a you know it's a different kind of you kind of coming in and going back out again it's a little tight the first couple of times you go around and then as you keep going around more and more it loosens up and becomes where you're supposed to do it okay same kind of connection here this is a yoke sweater as you can kind of tell same thing start in the bottom left the side uh, you start at the bottom on the left hand side and go around and get the body done and then you get the sleeves done and then you put them all on one needle like this and then you then you start doing your yoke especially if you're doing a stranded yoke you do your yoke and do your decreases and I'm there and I've talked before about um, traditionally for a banded yoke um, you end up with halfway up you do you go down a quarter um a quarter you know you lose 25 percent use a quarter of your stitches and then you do up a half again and you use a third of your stitches and at the very top you lose i think what they determined was two-fifths of your stitches but their formula is for that so that's how all of that goes together now the hard thing about this particular type of sweater is if you do the yoke stranded and the body um in plain stockinette, you could possibly have a um, difference in tension between the stranded work, um, excuse me, the, the uh, stockinette and the stranded work. And if you, you know, sometimes you're stuck, you're, um, you won't, you'll get a different gauge. Let's just put it that way. Now, that being said, I knew, you know, there are things that, as I said, I'm not thinking linearly. linearly. Let's go back to this lovely baby here. Um, the one of the, the the possible problems with this particular one is that you're knitting in the round here and you're knitting flat here. This is the first one we looked at, and I forgot to mention that um, you could have a gauge difference between knitting in the round and knitting flat, because there is a different people sometimes will get a different gauge for their purling than they do for their knitting. So just be aware of that. So all right. Now we've just done the yoked sweater here. Now the next one is going to be um, kind of interesting. The next one, here we go, is the set in sleeve. And it is um, kind of one I'm kind of playing with and kind of having fun trying to figure out. I've done one or two things with it. Um, it says you do the same thing as you do here. You knit the body and the sleeves. When you get to the underarm, you put everything on one needle, just like you did with the raglan and just like you did with the yoke. You put everything on one needle and you do your decreases for your body because there's markers at each corner. So 
I said we talked about putting markers at each junction, marker there, marker there, marker there, marker there. At each join, you do your decreases for your body on one side of the marker, and you do your decreases for your sleeve on the other side of the marker, okay? Except for the very top. And we're gonna talk about what happens there in just a minute, because we're gonna look at sleeves really quickly. And so put a pin in that, and um, we'll talk about why you have to, um, why you have to stop at going completely in the round. It's just, it's really interesting because what happens is, and I can show you this right here, this is a Frankenstein sweater that I do for when I teach classes. Why that red is all over the place, okay. On this side is a drop shoulder. It has, um, yes, you can kind of even see it. It's even easier to see here. You see there's that black stitch there. Um, I put a certain number of stitches on a holder and I also did decreases. So you can tell that if this had not had those modifications, then this line right there would actually be way over here. So I have moved that line by doing decreases here. I've moved that line further to the right, further up on the shoulder, okay? This, this is an example of that. On this side is an example of what we were just talking about that set in where you put them all on the same, um, same needle. The advantage of that is that as you are going around, if you've got a pattern like this, your patterns are gonna line up because it's all on one needle. You're not having to sort of fudge them in, ease them in when you, if this was a set in sleeve. It gives the appearance of a set in sleeve, but it is um, actually done in the round, okay? Now, it's the very top, and you can see, this is a small sweater, it's the very top that is, um, not there, here. So you can see my little finger kind of come. It's right there, that it's because the top of the sleeve, and we're gonna look at that in just a second, the top of the sleeve is flat to go into that shoulder area because your shoulders aren't pointed. You want them to kind of curve around. So you can't kind of get that in the round. You have to do that by easing in. And usually it's only, you know, about that much you have to ease in. And we'll look at that on a real life model mannequin sweater thingy over there, okay? All right, we're gonna look at the um, cardigan options here. This is flat and seamless. Um, this is an interesting way. I. I have done, I think, one or two of these. Um, I've got plenty of designer friends. This is, uh, well, at least one designer friend. This is the way they design sweaters. In the, it's sort of in the round. It's, it's more or less, it's not really in the round cardigans. It's not in the round, it's just seamless. And what they do is they cast on the center. The start of round is in the center. It's all cardigans, start of round is in the center. Um, and they put on stitches for the right front, the back, and the left front. And they, they can even put on stitches for the rib and so you have say, I don't know, 10 stitches for the, for the rib and you go, I mean, for the, the button band kind of thing. And you go around, um, there's a marker there for your side. You knit around the back, you're knitting around to this side marker, you go here and you, you knit the extra stitches for your um, button band or your um, buttonhole band. And then, let's, let's have an earthquake here with the camera, okay. And then you turn, <clears throat> you turn it and you purl back. So basically you're going back and forth like this. So you're, it's seamless, but it's flat, and you, but you're still not piecing. So you're going back and forth until you get to your underarm here, and then the sleeves are knit separately and you're either doing a raglan or you're doing a set in like we talked about earlier, or, or whatever kind of sleeve you're gonna do. But that's a real interesting way to do, um, to do a cardigan in the round, not in the round, um, flat, but seamless, okay? The other cardigan option is this is the one I usually do. This is a cardigan round that starts in the center with steaks in the middle. Your round starts in the middle of the steak, so you don't have to weave in any ends because all your ends are in the steak and you're gonna cut open that anyway. And you knit around, um, completely around and around and around and around and around, and you treat it as if you did any of these other sweaters. You can do your um, set in sleeve, you can do um, your, your faux set in sleeve, you can stop and do the top and the bottom separately, you can do any way else to, you can, to finish this top up here, but all you're doing is, is um, having this steak here for the opening of the cardigan. You, if you're doing a, um, the, the um, sort of modified drop shoulder, you would have steaks in here, 
to knit your sleeves that way. But it's just, it's basically carded. Now, the interesting thing about a cardigan is you're doing an all over pattern is that, and I've got an example um, here, hold on. This is a little cardigan I did for a class, I don't know, last, oh, a couple summers ago, I guess. Um, it's a little tiny cardigan, but with a cardigan, it's really interesting. You have to add one extra stitch um, than you do for a um, pullover. You'll see here that that stitch right there is the center and it's the first stitch, body stitch you hit after the rib. You come all the way around. If you, so you can't just cut it because if you cut this pattern with, um, if you cut this pattern and put that stitch there, the other side of that would be those three stitches right there and it wouldn't be a mirror image. So you have to add one extra stitch so that you have this here. As I said, if you put this together, you'd have two central stitches. But for a cardigan, you have to add an extra stitch. Hopefully that makes sense. All the way down, I had to add an extra stitch on that edge to make it a mirror image on both sides. And do you have to do that? No, it just looks better. I mean, I just think it looks neater that way. All right, let's look at sleeves in the round, okay? Here is a sleeve that's completely, or different sleeves you can do. Here is a sleeve that's completely flat. And at any time, you can make your sleeve like this and, um, you know, your basic sleeve, make it flat. You seam up, you know, these sides and you ease this into whatever opening you have, whatever of those other patterns, other, um, models of um, sweater construction, you can just ease that in. It doesn't matter. What I want to join, what I want to make you draw your attention to is that this flat piece right there, which corresponds to um, coming over, where is it? Coming over, we talked about this sweater, coming over the top of us, of the, um, of the shoulder. So that's where that little straight piece goes. So you have to accommodate for that. And somehow it's, it's actually this whole area right in here you have to accommodate for. And I'm gonna show you how that works in just a second. All right, here's the other thing. Uh, the next one is a hybrid flat and round. This sweater is worked and your underarm, if you do the bottom, it's the tube. So there's your bottom. Um, there's the bottom is, in a, is a tube, the main part of this, of the, um, the main part of the sleeve is a tube. You start the beginning of the round is in that underarm area there. And um, you work to the underarm area doing your, in this case, depending on if you're doing bottom up, doing your increases on either side of a central stitch. And if there is no central stitch, you just add one stitch to make it work. And then you do the top flat back and forth. And, and um, just like you would do, you just like you did um, this one. You, the top of this is just flat and you ease, would ease that in if that's what you want to do. This is another one I call mostly in the round where the bottom is in the round, but the top is in the round too. This sleeve cap is completely in the round too. And what you do, you end up doing is putting a steak in here. And then that last bit is done flat. And, um, and that's what we're gonna look at in just a second. But you put that steak here, so you cut that steak open and fit it into your armhole. And this is completely in the round, okay? This one, you have a seam along the side here, you ease it in. This one, you have, where are we? This one, you have no seam here and you ease it in. There's no seams in this at all, except for where you have to ease that into the body itself. This one, you have no seams here, except for you have a steak here and you, you ease that in there. Um, this one is a real interesting one. This one is mostly completely in the round and it is two at, two at a time, which I find very fascinating, is that you have one sleeve here and a steak and another sleeve there and a steak and you work completely around both of them at the same time until you get to the underarm. Here they are flat together. There's um, stitch number one. Why is that not there? Huh, I wonder what happened to that. Anyway, stitch, I mean, sleeve number one and sleeve number two there and the steak in the middle. Um, and then you get, when you get to the, finish it up, you cut the two steaks, you cut these two steaks open and then you seam all along this long, the long um, seam here and then you ease that in. Okay, so that's all the pretty pictures I have. Okay, lots of pretty little 
little drawings. I don't know what pretty is. I'm, I think I'm deluding myself to think they're pretty, but they're at least hopefully functional. Um, I showed you these two guys, um, how this works. Um, this is this, um, the drop shoulder, real conventional drop shoulder with the, in the British tradition. Here is one that is modified a little bit, and I don't know whether you can tell it better this way, um, that this comes in. So here is, here is where you would be if you hadn't done any of it, and I have therefore moved that seam further up towards the shoulder. Hopefully that you can tell that. Okay, um, this is an example of a really old sweater, done complete, uh, a yoke sweater, that I always have to check. I was going to show you about this back. Yeah, um, this is the front, right? The interesting thing is, is that there are no um, short rows or any sort of wrap and turns or anything to bring this front neck down lower. Um, you can tell because you can see how much of the gray is at the top of the burgundy and on the back, it's the exact same amount. It's only done, it's done when I block it. I just pull that front down just a little bit so that it doesn't, that's the one thing people don't particularly like about yoke sweaters is that it's the front and the back are the exact same height. Um, I just do it in blocking. But this is, that's the front. This is the back. And you can tell where that jog is right in there as to where that is. And if you hold up, this is the front. It is across the back right. Okay. Now, what I wanted to show you and let's see if I can make this happen. Let me do some camera changing, hold on. Okay, I know this looks kind of weird, but we're gonna try this. This is a, this is a jacket, get down here. This is a jacket um, that I did where I put, did the body up to the underarms to here. I did the sleeves up to the arm to underarms here and put them all on one um, needle. And then you can see where the color changes here. It all is, um, it, I, I, I didn't fit this in. I, what I wanted to see what I could do is I could do this as a set in sleeve, okay? And what happens is you get to about where this white um, ribbon is and you're all on one needle. Now when you get to here and you're on one needle, you have to, you put, you want to have this, uh, this slope here. So you put in a steek here to, to do the decreases um, for the neck there, but you get here and um, I think you can see, sort of see, um, maybe I can zoom in later. Um, you're trying to get across here, but this is kind of where the sleeve is. This maybe it's better over here. Yeah, it's probably better over there. Okay, here's where your, your um, this, the sleeve top is here. And what you do is you get to about right there and you put those stitches onto a holder, but you've got to get around the whole rest all the way up to the shoulder here. So you end up putting a little bit of a steek there so you can keep going around and around and around. And then when you get done, you cut open that steek and that gives you this opening here. And then you knit this up to there and ease that in like that. Okay, that's a lot of pieces parts going on, but you can kind of see, I tried to put this ribbon here so that you could kind of see, this is your row, this is your needles are here. This part has not been done yet. So you have to get around all that stuff. <laughs> I'm still, this is the one I'm still kind of working on to make sure I understand how it works. So, cause I did a lot of research trying to figure it out. Okay, um, that is all I know about, um, bottom up, in the round, um, sweater construction. Um, can you, are each one of those little um, diagrams, those little examples, you have to do it exactly that way? No, you can mix and match things the way you want it to do. All right, thanks guys. If you've got any questions, let me know. Um, I am working on a couple of different things and that's why you haven't seen me much on, on uh, social media, just because I've got a couple things I'm working on. Um, more soon. So thanks guys. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining me. Leave a comment if you've got any questions or just if you want to leave a comment, if you've got any questions about your knitting, please, uh, strand and color work knitting. I can other knitting, but I'm better with the strand and color work stuff. Um, thanks guys. And uh, can I say that again? Thanks guys. <laughs> anyway, hope you are having a wonderful time. Take care of your knitting. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. <laughs>